Thank you for joining me for yet another unboxing video. And today, that's right, we've got Scooby-Doo the board game. Created by Cool Mini or Not, Simon. A game by Fred Parrott and Guillaume Goulart. Scooby-Doo the board game. Help the Scooby gang trap the monsters before they scare everyone away. Jinkies. A monster has been seen in the city, terrorizing the local population. Mystery Inc. already has a plan, but now they must work together to find components to build the trap, capture the monster, and save the day before the entire city becomes a literal ghost town. Table of contents. This game is for one to five players, ages 10 up. It takes about 30 minutes to play. Scooby-Doo the board game is a cooperative family game for one to five players bringing the beloved cartoon series to life with amazing miniatures of a whole Scooby gang. Of course, it's brought to you by Warner Brothers and Simon or Cool Mini or Not. This was released in 2022. Of course, you could scan that for more content right here. If you have any questions about this game or anything else that Simon released, go over to simon.com for more information. So, let's crack this bad boy open and see what kind of goodness we have on the inside. So, right off the bat, as always, whenever you get something from Simon, you always have the free content. Scan it right here with the barcode. You got that. That's always part of what they have. Then, of course, we have the rule book. So, can we do the board game, rule book, table of contents? Overview. This is in this one to five player cooperative game, take on the role of one of the members of the Scooby gang, each with their own unique ability. Moving through eight locations by foot or by driving the mystery machine, the gang must work together to collect resources and build traps to capture the monster before the entire city becomes a literal ghost town. The Scooby gang can only succeed when actions, uh, actions, good planning, and a bit of luck are brought together against an unleashed monster with many zany hijinks along the way. Credits to the good people who brought you the game. Of course, Scooby-Doo is a, as a characters are related to Warner Brothers and Hanna-Barbera. More free content. Go right there and scan that barcode. Again, all the, the contents of what you get in the, so look at that. You get, a, get to put together a mystery machine and the game set up. I like the fact that this is so nice and colorful. I mean, Simon, with any product that they put out, they always do a fantastic job with miniatures, punch outs and all that stuff like that. But when you have something that is geared more towards a younger audience and when it pops and it's colorful and all those things, uh, the kids really dig it that way. I know I have two young daughters. I have a seven year old and a 12 year old and they love playing games with their daddy and uh, they love playing games with characters and creatures that they know. So again, well, everything's labeled. Everything tells you exactly how the setup is done. Then over here, winning and losing the game. Players win the game when they complete all traps in play. Players immediately lose the game if at any one at any time one or more of these conditions are met. A third location would never become haunted. There are no more monster tokens left in the monster token slot when one is required. There are not enough Scooby Gang cards left to distribute to the players. You've got different difficulty levels. You could set this at easy, medium, hard. You got gameplay, choose a card, reveal, action. Draw and choose cards, Scooby Gang card, how to read them, what each part means on them. Then over here you got reveal, and then you got actions. Scooby Gang member turn, move, perform, uh, perform location action. You could move, fright, the mystery machine. Perform location action, recover Scooby gang cards, restore visitor tokens, remove monster tokens, gather resources, craft traps, perform special abilities, two player rules, monster turn, chuck monster activation, time for the monsters to move, different examples of how the monsters move, scaring away visitors, and going into a haunted location. Then we have end of the round, 
game end, solo mode, setting it up, and gameplay. So the rule book is only eight pages long, and that's something I love to see because when my kids see a new game, they want to get right into it. They want to. They don't want to hear a lot of gobbledygook when I'm reading all these instructions to them. So there you go. That's your rules and your free content right there. And of course, we've got some punch outs right here. Some Scooby snacks right there, getting some sandwiches in them. Different kinds of tracks, uh, tracks. Looks like some wrenches. Not sure what that is. Looks like a shirt. Looks like a net. Flip it over. Yeah, same thing on both sides. Oh, have a sandwich and a sandwich that's been eaten. That's cool. I like that. That's cool. Really captures the theme oh the mystery machine Gotta punch it out and put it together cans of gas haunted location haunted location got some scary eyes looking at you and it probably pops out yep very cleanly that out nice and easy there it is and look at that it goes back in as easy as it pops right out there you go so that's your second set of tokens in the mystery machine next thing coming out of the box we have here is looks like it's the a second the board itself very very cool very very cool so I'm gonna pull this to the side real quick we'll get back we'll get that back on the screen in a minute once we pull the board out so let's take a look at this board here first we've got places where those those heads go some arrows swamps and general store traps crafting more icons, which we'll learn when we read the rule book, what those icons represent. The Witch's Shack, Monster Starts Here, Wolf and Lodge. Up to this side here, see what this is. Got the malt shop, got, it looks like you got some planes, a hanger here. Got the malt, the malt shop is up top here. Your draw deck, your save deck, recover, discard deck, monster decks monster tokens you got fun land here more things here more heads go there more arrows you've got the airfield where we saw the planes earlier okay and then we got one more section i didn't show you yet and we'll put the board down and we'll check to see if there's anything on the back also so there's your airfield your full airfield Got the witch's shack up there and then down here we've got graveyard of ships so sunken ships over there we got vasquez castle mystery machine starts here okay oh, so there's only one side of the board and there's the board right there so there it is nice like i said it's meant for younger kids nice bright Looks like it's going to be pretty easy to set up and play this game. So that, that's something I'm looking forward to playing with my kids right away. This is cool. Because who doesn't love Scooby-Doo? Hence why I picked up this game. All right, the free material. Again, that's the board itself. The game board, that's the Scooby-Doo. And here's and there's the free content. And there are the punch-outs, including the Mystery Machine punch-out. That's cool as well. We have some oversized cards which is always good to see. It's easier to hold on to these cards when kids are playing, which is very good. So we got some cards here. Let's flip them over to uh, you. got SD, you got some eyes. So SD, let's separate them out here. Just, this is my first time opening this box as well, so I didn't get a chance to set them aside quite yet. So, All 
All right, so it looks like we got a set of cards which have these ghost eyes on them, or the bad guy's eyes on them, however you want to look at it. And you got Scooby-Doo cards, it looks like. So you got the SD cards. So let's take a look at, there's less of these, so let's take a look at these first. It says 41, four, reshuffle the monster discard pile with the monster deck. So they got numbers and how to move. All right, 30, it's got different numbers on it. 41, 38, 35, 31, 27. And again, all the icons will be explained in that rule book. 25, 21, 19, 15. That one has nothing on it. All right, 12, 7. Maybe the monster moves three space, seven, seven spaces or whatever. I don't know. We're going to figure out what these cards mean. But there you go. These, this is part of the monster deck, which goes right over here. That's where it would go. But I'm going to put it up here for now so you can see it. That's the monster deck. Okay. And this is the draw deck, obviously. Again, they have numbers. It looks like they all have numbers on them. But I'm looking around the board. I don't see any place where it has numbers. So these numbers must indicate something. Maybe, it, maybe it's... Action sequence numbers, I'm not sure. Maybe those cards are supposed to go in between here. I'm not sure. Maybe they're supposed to stay, the deck's supposed to stay in one way. So let me see. Maybe I wasn't supposed to break them apart. It says 42, oh, it was zero to four. If removing monster tokens, may remove up to two additional tokens. Okay. Place a visitor token in each location you pass this turn, including where you started. This turn, you are not affected, affected by fright. If restoring Scooby gang cards, you may restore up to two additional cards. All right, I'm not going to read all this stuff on all these cards, but you see it's got all these numbers. You got 28, 26, 24, 23, 22, 2018. So these may be story cards. Two, one. Maybe zero to one spaces you can move, zero to two spaces you can move. I'm not sure. So again, all these icons will be explained in the rule book, obviously. But that's what that's that's what that deck of cards looks like. Okay, nice quality cards, good stock. Uh, now here's another set of oversized cards, which are still in shrink. So I'm going to open that up off uh, off camera. So. In case I cut myself, which I hope I don't. Which I don't want to do, but sometimes it happens. Oh, there we go. Give myself a little bit of an opening. Ah, there it goes. I got it. You know, as well as I do, sometimes it can get tricky. All right, so here we go. We got peers, here we have these are all the same. Okay, then we have the mystery machine, and then we got some ghost heads. All right, so let's take a look at what these cards do. It says Scooby-Doo the board game. So let's flip it over. Ah, oh, where these are your character cards. Cool. Of course, the classic Scooby-Doo. Starting location, general store, special abilities, Scooby snack. The monster doesn't move or trigger abilities during their next activation, but is still able to fright. Keep the revealed monster card face up on top of the monster deck for their next turn. We got our boy Shaggy, starring location, the malt shop. Special ability, Wacky Sprint. May take any two resources from other Scooby Gang members and place them on any trap cards. So then ability slot, and he's got ability slot top two. All right. We got our boy Fred, starring location, graveyard of ships. Natural ability, he's a natural leader. Any other Scooby Gang member may move one location and perform that location's action. Got Velma, starting location is Wolf's End Lodge. Special ability, she's an expert investigator. Gain any two resources except for the wrench. Daphne, starting location is Funland. Special ability, she's a martial artist. Move up to three ghost eyes. Guess what that means. And we're back to Scooby-Doo. So there are your lowable characters that you can be. Of course, you have the mystery machine, that's the vehicle itself. It says the mystery machine. 
Any location where the mystery machine is may have an additional Scooby gang member. A Scooby gang member that ends their movement in a location where the mystery machine is may discard one gas token to move to any location. So you put the three gas tokens there that we saw earlier, put them right on there. That's the mystery machine. I'll flip that over real quick. That's the mystery machine card. And it looks like we got some bad guys. You got the ghost clown, you got the green ghost, and you have the creeper. Let's take a look at these cards. Again, they've got that on the background spooky eyes the ghost clown monster ability ghost clown adds one monster token to any to an empty visitor token slot in each location he enters there can only be one monster token per location visitor tokens can't be added to occupied slots haunted tokens can't be removed from locations with monster tokens that's the ghost clown then we have green ghost monster ability Place one monster token in each location the green ghost enters. A player that ends their turn in a location with a monster token must discard one card from the draw deck before performing the location action. There can only be one monster token per location. Then we also have the creeper card. Monster ability. Place one monster token on each dashboard, uh, dashed border the creeper crosses during his movement. There can only be one monster token per border. Borders with monster tokens are blocked and Scooby Gang members can't cross them. If all Scooby Gang members get stuck, the game is lost. So he seems to be the strongest out of them all. Because he can block them. If he blocks them in, they win the game. So there you go. You've got your Mean Machine. You got your, you got the Scooby Gang. And you have <clears throat> the villains. We also have a small deck of monster discards. All right, so we got a small pack of mini cards. So I'm not sure, okay, so some of these have different wording on them, so we're gonna pull those out. And then we have Trap Completed. These are all the same, it appears to me, on the front. Oop. Okay, so let's take these over real quick. Ah, so maybe you need these three items to complete that trap. Those four items. Yeah, four items. Four items. There it is. Gets you pull that pull a card and it tells you how. So you, this is what you need to complete that trap. And if you finish the tra trap, you flip the card over and say it's trap completed. That's what I'm assuming that's going to do. Okay. I'm happy so far. This game does not seem overly complex, which is a very very good thing. All right. And so this is monster discard plus two Scooby Gang cards when fright. Got three bones and those items. Okay. Monster movement. Remove one visitor token. Okay, that's so that's a visitor token. Okay, remove one visitor token from the location where the monster starts its movement. We got you, I guess these and you got three bones next to it again. Minus two gasoline immediately if possible. Three nets, two wrenches. It looks like got some bones there. I haven't seen any bones, so that might just be there because it's Scooby-Doo. Monster discards. One card from the Scooby Gang draw deck at the start of every monster activation. Let me fill these up here. Okay. Monster has plus one movement. So these might just be bonus cards. Remove one monster token from the monster token slot. Oh, drop that. Sorry about that. Let me do that again. Remove one monster token from the monster token slot. There it is. All right. So those are all of your cards. I'm just going to show you this inside here. We've got ourselves a uh, really cool, um, secure way to keep all your items in the box as well. So it's got two layers, which it normally does. And that's pretty cool. I like the way that's set up. So, so it's 
get on to take a look at these figures. These are oversized figures. These are not uh, these are not the size of like a, a 28 mil which or 30 mil, which are the what you would see uh, in a traditional zombie side game by Simon or anything like that. These are much more epic sized figures, and I'm going to show you an example of that. So again, this box looks like that. You take the tape off, it pops right up like that. So that's cool too. All right. So how big are these figures? Well. There is Scooby-Doo. He's a pretty, pretty, pretty large figure. So I'm going to put him over here. How large is he? Well, let's do a comparative. So I happen to have a Starfinder figure uh, standee right here. Okay. But a traditional Starfinder figure. And these are, this would be a Dungeon and Dragons. So I'm gonna put him on top there so that's, because right now he's baseless, but I'll put him on there like I did, there's a base. And this is a monster figure. So, like I said, these are much, much larger, maybe 40 millimeter figures of epic scale. There you go. So that's, that's the dog, Scooby, we got Shaggy. Now. Shaggy. So obviously it's much larger than 28 millimeter. So I'm going with maybe it's about 40. But again, just like any Simon figure, beautifully sculpted. Really gives you the feel for, you know, what we grew up with, or at least what I grew up watching Scooby-Doo, one of my favorite cartoons of all time. So there you go. You got Scooby. You got Shaggy. Got our next character right here in blue. Got Velma. Okay. You got Daphne. Of course, the blue one is Fred. But the sculpts are beautiful, high quality, really cool. Really digging in, really digging the sculpts. Then, of course, we've got the monsters. This is the clown. So, if we use the clown, Again, base to base, base to base, no base to base. So I'll see, these are very, very large figures. This is the Creeper. Looks like the Hunchback of Notre Dame. His wrist is a little thin there, but compared to this one here, but that's all right. Beautiful, we've got some mold lines. You want to put some green stuff in there, you could do that. But again, these if you painted this up, they would look really, really awesome. There you go. And last but not least, you have, I think they call him a specter, the green ghost. The green ghost. Again, you expect nothing less from Simon, but these are great sculpts. Really capture the vibe of the, you know, the Scooby-Doo TV series. So there you go, put them all up here. Oh, knocked them over. So there you have it. That is everything that is included in this unboxing of 
Scooby-Doo the board game. Brought to you by, who else? Cool Mini or Not, or better known as Simon. As always, thank you so much for joining me for this unboxing video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did bringing it to you. Uh, if you did, you could always give us a thumbs up. You could always leave a comment below. Always love to read what you write down there. Of course, you could always hit the subscribe button. This way, you can be kept up to date as to any other time that we'll release new content to the page. As always, thank you so much for joining me. Be safe, be well. Enjoy the remainder of your day, and we'll catch you on the next unboxing video.